Chapter 10. Welcome guests. Now, come on, guys. Please, it is so simple. Just hit the subscribe button. All I'm asking you to do is literally click a button. Please? Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Here I go. Chapter 10. Welcome guests. Daniel, you've got some visitors here to see you. Are you feeling up to it, kiddo? Yeah, of course. I keep telling you, Dad. I feel fine. Well, if you don't mind, I'll let the doctors make the diagnosis around here. Frankly, Daniel felt anything but fine. His right arm was throbbing with a dull ache that turned into a stabbing pain every time he moved it, and there was an itch halfway up his cast that was unreachable. At least the nausea was gone. This morning was the first time that he had been able to keep down a solid breakfast. That didn't make it taste any better, though. Hospital food was still hospital food. Daniel heard someone cough and was surprised to see Rowan and Lucia standing in the doorway. When his dad had announced that he had his first visitors, he just assumed that Molly would be among them. Hey, said Rowan. He was carrying a package under his arm, wrapped with metallic blue paper. Hey, said Daniel. Well, said Daniel's dad, grabbing his coat, I'm going to go out and stretch my legs for a minute and let you kids catch up. No arm wrestling. The kids waited for Daniel's dad to close the door behind him. Then, Lucia sat down gently on the bed next to Daniel. Does it hurt? she asked, eyeing the cast. A bit, answered Daniel, but I've had worse. Daniel caught Rowan rolling his eyes, and Daniel felt himself blush. He hadn't had worse. He had never so much as broken a finger before now. He didn't know why he was showing off it in front of Lucia. I brought to you some chocolates from the gift shop, she said. I figured you'd be sick of the hospital food. All they had were the ones in heart-shaped boxes. Uh, thanks, said Daniel. Okay, said Rowan. So, Daniel, what's the prognosis? Do you get to keep missing school, or are they finally kicking you out of here? I'm leaving today or tomorrow, but I probably won't be back to school for another week. That's terrible, moaned Luzia. We all miss you around the treehouse. Oh, I almost forgot, she said, reaching into her coat pocket. Rose wanted me to give you this. She handed Daniel a crayon drawing of a boy. At least Daniel assumed it was supposed to be a boy, falling on his head. There was a happy yellow sun watching in the sky. Daniel laughed. Tell her thanks for me, Luzia, and tell her I plan on getting it framed. Do you need anything, Daniel? she asked. Do you need an extra pillow or anything? Daniel thought for a moment. Well, I could go for a soda if you don't mind. Luzia practically leapt out of her shoes. Sure. Is there a vending machine nearby? Rowan interjected before Daniel could answer. Nope. You have to go all the way down to the cafeteria. All the way down on the ground floor. Uh, okay, said Luzia, blinking. I'll be back in a few minutes then. She gestured at Daniel. Don't go anywhere. Daniel gestured to his broken arm and smiled back. I won't. Rowan waited until Lucia was out of earshot, then turned back on Daniel. I think I've discovered discovered your superpower, Daniel. Oh, yeah? You have the power to make Lucia swoon. It's kind of gross, actually. Me, but I... Seriously, laughed Rowan. Have you noticed the way she looks at you? You don't need super senses to see it. Daniel rolled his eyes, but the truth was that he had noticed. He just wasn't sure what he was supposed to think about it. Has Molly said anything about her? Rowan adjusted his glasses and squinted at Daniel. Molly? No. Why? No reason, answered Daniel quickly. It's just, you know, I never hear the end of it. The two were silent for a moment before Daniel spoke up, more quietly this time. How's Simon? Oh, he's fine, answered Rowan. Physically, he wasn't hurt at all. That's a relief, but is he... does he... He's just like all the others now, a normal 13-year-old boy. Daniel's head sank back into his pillow. He caught the emphasis in Rowan's voice and understood immediately. So it had all been for nothing. Daniel had hoped that he had gotten to him in time, that he had stopped or at least interrupted whatever it was that thing was trying to do. It would be hard to face Simon again. Even though Daniel knew that he would have no memory of what had been done to him, but Daniel would know. He would never forget. So you broke your arm, huh? Rowan pulled a chair up next to his bed and be began studying the control panel full of buttons that Daniel used to raise and lower the hospital bed. Yeah, and I had a pretty bad concussion, 
But I'm out of the woods, and I'm hoping to go home today. This place is dead boring. Here, I brought you something. It might help pass the time. Rowan set the blue package on Daniel's lap. Daniel fumbled at the wrapper with his left hand, but he couldn't get the leverage to tear the paper. It just kept sliding around the sheets. Oh, sorry. Here, let me. Rowan tore the paper off with a flourish and revealed a stack of Johnny Noble comics, each one bagged and boarded for extra protection. Wow, are you sure? Absolutely. Just don't get any pudding on them. This is strictly a super loan. Since you can't go to the tree fort, I'm bringing the tree fort to you. Thanks, Rowan. Don't mention it. Rowan gestured to the panel next to his bed. So, what do all these buttons do? Don't touch them. Some move the bed up and down, and one of them calls the nurse. It took me like an hour to find the perfect position for this bed, so hands off. Is your nurse pretty? My nurse's name is Ralph. Oh, so, no? No! Daniel smiled in spite of himself, and Rowan looked pleased with his little joke. Things were suddenly easier between the two of them. So, have you talked to Molly? asked Daniel. Talked? No, not so much. Dodged? Yes. At the bus stop, she pretends I'm not even there. Which was kind of a release at first. At least she's no longer taking swings at me. But by now, it's getting old. Daniel, Rowan went on, turning serious. You know why I did it, right? Why I stopped her from helping? Daniel nodded. Rowan continued. She wouldn't have been able to help you. She would have ended up just like Simon. Yeah, I know. Molly knows, too. That's probably why she's so mad at you right now. She hates it when other people are right. If it's any consolation, she gave me one heck of a black eye for my trouble. Rowan took off his glasses, and Daniel could see the faint outline of a yellow and blue bruise under Rowan's left eye. You should have seen it a week ago. I looked like a prize fighter. A prize fighter who gets beaten by girls, Daniel teased. Well, yes, but mean girls. Very mean. Speaking of trouble, is Eric mad? About what? As far as he knows, you were camping out with Molly and me, and you climbed the wrong tree. You mean you lied to him? I am withholding certain details of the truth until I get all the facts. There's no need to upset him until we know exactly what happened. And I was hoping you could tell me that. What happened at Simon's window? What'd you see, Daniel? And so, Daniel recounted what he saw in Simon's bedroom that night. The darkness, the shadow that moved. Daniel was surprised at how hard it was to say it out loud for the first time, but he immediately felt better for having done it. Through it all, Rowan listened intently. Never interrupting, but Daniel could see his eyes go wide several times. It was affecting him, too. Rowan, who was always so calm, so unflappable, was afraid. I actually wondered if you saw anything with your powers. I thought you might have... Rowan shook his head. Trees were in the way. I can't see through things, you know. Plus, I was kind of busy getting punched in the face. Rowan got up from his seat and started pacing the room. Proof. We need proof, he said. For what? To convince Eric that what you saw wasn't simply your own shadow on the wall. That your mind wasn't playing tricks on you. Because I'm telling you, it'll take some hard and fast evidence to make da Eric take this seriously. Well, what about the camera? I was taking pictures the whole time. But Rowan was shaking his head again. Yeah, we found it. Rowan reached into his jacket and pulled out a stack of photographs. They were all the same, a mass of shadows and blurred images. Whatever that thing was in Simon's room, it wasn't easily captured on camera. Daniel's hopes sank. It seemed that everything he'd done that night had been a waste of time. Rowan, I thought you were with Eric on all of this. Obey the rules and all. Except what fate has in store for you, remember? Rowan looked at his friend. I listen to you, and I can tell you're telling the truth, Daniel. And to be honest, what you saw scares me. But maybe it was destiny that sent you to Noble Screen. So maybe it is our destiny to stop this, whatever it is, from ruining another kid's life. Rowan smiled a wicked smile. Maybe it's our destiny to kick some butt. Daniel laughed. Just when he thought he had his friend figured out, Rowan managed to surprise him. But we are going to need Eric. Rowan was serious again. And like I said, for that, we need some real evidence. Daniel tried to kick away the sheets in frustration, but as he did so, the stack of Johnny Noble comics began to slide off his lap and onto the floor. He reached over to stop them, but all he managed to do was bump his cast against the bed rail. He winced as a jolt of pain went up his arm. This was going to take some getting used to. Here, let me get those, offered Rowan. 
Thanks, said Daniel, gesturing weakly with his broken wing. Guess I'm not going to be much use for a while. Not so fast. If we're going to convince Eric before his birthday, then we are going to need you to do what you do best. Which is? You're a detective, aren't you? said Rowan, handing the books back to him. Time to do some detecting. If you like this video, please subscribe.